Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, we're planning to do quite a few different things. Uh, we've got some asteroids coming in, however, they mostly have apoapses, uh, I mean periapses, around uh, Kerbin. So for instance, the next one that's coming in would be HSJ227. And here we see that it does have a periapses here. Uh, of uh, 64,000 kilometers, so it's safe in theory, uh, assuming time warping doesn't do something to it. And uh, similarly, others like this uh, ZFZ-700. Since we've already captured an asteroid and demonstrated the ability to do that, um, there's no particular urgency in capturing these, since eventually we are going to get one like, for instance, this RDU-354, which happens to be the next one that doesn't have a periapsis. So that would be probably probably be the next one that we would try to uh, either shove away or bring into orbit. And this one is should be pretty easy since it's a class B. So, and, so that's going to be encountering Kerbin in another 27 days. Before that, though, uh, we've got some opportunities. Uh, I don't think I'll consider the Moho possibility much, but that's coming up. In about uh, 15 days, we could transfer to Moho, but uh, I think that's probably not the most pressing thing. Uh, of course, the scientists want to get to Duna, and especially Duna's moon Ike. That will occur in on day 59, so in 36 days. Uh, before that, there is an opportunity to send a mission to Jewel. And since public fervor is up, even though the scientists don't think the, these asteroids are originating at Joule at all, uh, since the public is uh, interested in Joule these days, uh, we might as well send something over there, take advantage of uh, public interest. So, uh, Joule, uh, we can get a transfer on day 49, and that will be in 26 days. That happens to be right before this Kerbin encounter of this asteroid, which is the next asteroid that is uh, noted as uh, encountering Kerbin itself, as opposed to just passing by. Now we still have to look at what happens with the other asteroids, so let's let's do that. Let's take them in turn. HSJ HSJ227 is the next one that will come in. Let's just make sure it has a periapsis, and if not, we'll have to send a mission up. Based on our previous experience, we could probably send a mission up once it's entered the Kerbin sphere of influence. So, we don't have to rush. And that was a class D that we did that with. Uh, this is a class C, so it should be even easier. Okay. And indeed, uh, this one has a Kerbin periapsis and will pass by harmless. Next one up is VYZ and it's coming in three days has periapsis sorry to do this but uh, it is necessary for the safety of Kerbin and uh, we do want to make sure that we don't cause any problems okay Ooh. Well, it's about uh, to leave anyway, but... Or is, no, this is it's about to leave here. It's practically in orbit, isn't it? Looks like we could probably capture it without any problem. Okay, well, uh, you know what, let's send the mission up to do that first. Uh, no point uh, letting this one go. L let me see if my theory that this one will be easy to capture is correct. It's going retrograde, isn't it? That's a little bit trickier, but I don't think that's a huge problem. All right, let's let's try this out. There's no point messing with a winning formula, so we might as well just go with the AD5 like we did before, and uh, it will simplify things since I want to get to that Jewel mission and at least get that off the ground. We won't actually reach Jewel in this episode because the t during the time it takes to reach Jewel, some of the other asteroids will come in. So, uh, but we can get this off the ground, and then, then yeah, we will have another asteroid hopefully. Uh, but we need to pick what crew we choose. I guess Jeb would be, have, might have been, well, 
Yeah, I guess it's about time to send Jeb out there. Alright, uh, Jeb is going out to meet an asteroid. Alright, so see you in the launch pad. Alright, well, we need to take a look at how things are approaching. Oh, I have to remember which one it is. That's the one tricky part of all this. Is it... Uh, no, it's not a tiny one. Uh, VYZ799. Yeah, that's that looks like it. Yeah. Okay, so VYZ799 targeted. Um, hmm. Let's see now. That's... Let's line up its path. Uh, tough to say when to launch. Where are we? So from here going northwest. And I guess we'll have enough juice to correct an inclination if we mess up. It's uh, Unfortunately we don't have any little markers uh, ascending node, descending node yet. But we'll get those once we start out. Okay, so heading west this time against the rotation of the planet. Throttle is up, Jeb is ready, and light, and go. Okay, now we've got some markers. We're going to be starting out with this huge uh, difference between us and the asteroid because, because of the rotation of the planet. But once we start going retrograde, it should be better. Now, by the way, I do... I do remember that I have not done all the science uh, on the ones that we've captured and in fact uh, I still need to rename the one we captured most recently but we've got we've got numerous priorities and I don't want to uh, I will take the opportunity to do such things once I think it's the right timing for them Okay, good. Uh, our inclination is descending quickly. Uh oh. Hey. Oh, it's probably because we've lost our orbit, that's why. I was going like, where's our ascending and descending node? Okay. Uh, we're getting it back, that's alright. Okay, boosters are away. Oh, we're tilting up a bit. Ah, uh, this this is probably wrong. Uh, I think this is the best we can do from here. I, th I don't think we're going to get... Because uh, my... It's because of this inclination. You can sort of see there is a gap here because I didn't time it quite right. There's about 17 degrees here, so uh, I'm not going to get too much better than 17 degrees on the difference. And you can tell that because the descending node here is at a 90 degree angle from where I am. And so if the descending node is a 90 degree angle from where you are, you can't correct it. There's no way. Okay, let's hold off there. I'll do the rest of my boost into orbit at the descending node. And so I'll correct both things at the same time. I think we should start now.
Okay, so... Should be all lined up. Now, trying to get an encounter is still tricky. As I've seen before. Oh, no, no, I didn't want to pull that one. Uh, well, there's something weird going on there. It really does not want me to encounter this where I think I should be encountering this. So, I'm just going to skip that. Let us instead, perhaps, boost out of periapsis for a bit. Like so. Burn out this stage. I especially want to get rid of this stage, if possible. The huge stage. Because that's unwieldy and I really don't want it tagging along the whole way. Alright, I'm not going to do any more of this burn. It was just to get rid of the, the launch stage. So, separation. Let's uh, activate this rocket and do a slight burn to move us away. Okay. Now, I guess we'll just have to wait for the asteroid. This asteroid is very slow. Of course, that's what makes it so easy to capture, but it's also making it very tedious to wait for it to come around to our location. Uh, maybe I can do a little bit more to intercept it closer to where it's at. Okay, 121.7 looks fine for now. Yeah, I guess we'll do this transfer. Just because I'm impatient and we have other things to do than get this particular asteroid. Since it is not a threat to Kerbin. So basically we'll be going all the way out here and then coming back around to meet it. That way delaying our arrival so that we can wait for it without just hovering around orbit in Kerbin. Uh, we'll still be in orbit, but such a tight orbit around Kerbin. It's basically to dodge the time warping limitations. Now this has to be done pretty precisely, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, well it's not liking me now. Alright, what's our fate? Ooh, that doesn't look good at all. What did I do wrong? Okay, it was just a tiny little... Wow, that is so finicky. Just a 2.4 meter per second difference. Set it off by quite a lot, right? I mean, it was way over here by the time we got there. Darn it, that'll be too much again. Yeah. I think I need to adjust it further away from Kerbin, but well, maybe I need to do it now, otherwise we're going to lose some efficiency in it. <sighs> Point one. Well, I better use my propellant for this.
Okay, now, once we do all that, will we be able to perhaps do further adjustments to get closer? 0.1 meters per second. Huh. Well. You know what? I'm, I'm sick of these 0.1 meter per second burns. Uh, so it's a little bit off. We'll fix it as we get closer. This is too... Too minute for my tastes. Yeah, we're off, but... Not all of our asteroid encounters were going to be as beautiful as the first one. Okay, I'm getting into that cycle where everything I do seems to go wrong, so... Let's not adjust the maneuver node anymore. Okay, well that's better than I thought it would be. 10 kilometers, just about. Okay, I think I'll be happy with that going in. Incidentally, there was an eight-day eight day gap between this asteroid and the next asteroid that was due to come in, so I'm not too worried about the fact that we might be missing something else. And the next asteroid due to come in still had a periapsis, so no worries there. Uh, arm the grabbing unit, the claw. Okay, and let's target the center of mass. Oh, there goes our distance. Okay. Oh yes, I have to tell it to control from the claw. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, we have clawed the subject. And how much do we weigh? 70 tons. Not bad. Not bad at all. Should not take us too long to push around an asteroid with uh, just 70 tons. So, uh, Jeb, well, let's see where you're going to come out of first. Um, oh, there, okay. Yeah, let's, let's have you take some sort of sample of the asteroid. Oh. The, is the EVA report something new? No, it's just high over curving, but we I guess we haven't done that before. Okay, keep that data. Weird. I, I would have sworn we had done the high over curving one before. But, uh... Up. Oh. Okay, uh, can you take a surface sample? Take sample. Okay, keep data. Don't drift, don't drift, uh, that way, that way, that way. Up. Uh, okay, well, this is going bad. <laughs> uh, okay, up. Up. Yeah. Okay, down and... down 
town. Okay, grab. Can you grab? Grab and board. All right. Oh, while we're at that, let me just see if a crew port is doable. Huh? Looks like it is. Okay, keep data. I guess we were in quite a hurry to uh, get science. Decided to do a lot of moon stuff, not so much the interim things. Alright, so we've got this. Uh, the thing to do, of course, is to make a maneuver at periapsis to burn to orbit, and doesn't take too much. And... Maybe we'll keep it... Well, let's see how much of this we can do. I don't know right now how much... I'm not going to calculate this time, because it's obvious we can get into orbit at least. Um, so I'm not going to do any pre-calculations about how much delta V we have with this. Probably, probably a sufficient amount. Obviously we can't use Kerbin's atmosphere to to break uh, to do the breaking because well we we the periapsis was nowhere near Kerbin's atmosphere. So in a way um, the class D one was easier. If we had a class B one that was headed towards Kerbin, that would be really easy. Uh, it probably would only take a handful of uh, meters per second delta V in order to in order to get that into orbit and a pretty tight orbit at that. Now, let me try and do the free pivot thing properly. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, of course, properly means I have to have con some control. Uh, this way. I want to make sure that I'm lined up with the center of mass properly. Uh, come on, come on, that was going right. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. There. Well, that's closer than we had before. All right, we'll go with that. But yeah, just trying to line it up properly. Okay, here we are, curving a safe distance away as we bring this asteroid into orbit. Let's make sure RCS is helping out with this part. Okay, well this is a breeze. I'm sure we're already in orbit. Let's reevaluate what we can do with this now. Let's say in a few minutes. Tight orbit. Within the moons. Yeah. That'll be good. 800 is fine. So let's just continue burning now. Come to think of it, maybe a geostationary orbit would be best. That was 2992, wasn't it? Uh, it's been a while since I put something in geostationary orbit around Kerbin. But maybe that's going too far, especially since uh, we're not going to be over anything interesting. We'll be on the opposite side from the KSC right now. We could probably adjust that at some other time. 
we could bring in closer and then set it uh, once it's above the KSC we could bring it back out to a geostationary orbit this one's much easier to push around than the class D's Kerbo stationary orbit if you insist So we'll just bring it in tight for now. Actually, maybe one thing I should do is correct inclination. I mean, why not, right? How much would that cost? Uh, so let's say we target the moon. And what we want to do is... Well, not... Oh, we'll still be going retrograde, though. Huh, that is a point. Well, let's let's make it a retrograde coplanar at least. Not that that's great. Let let's just see how much it costs, just for curiosity's sake. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we we could probably smash it into the moon. Uh, that could be interesting. But no, that that costs quite a lot, even uh, even from that far out from Kerbin. Let's see if it's this far out from Kerbin. Flattening it out. Costs less, obviously, but... But what's the point when it's retrograde? Make it polar? I guess that would at least uh, be more useful. Well, uh, some planets have pole stars. We're gonna have a pole asteroid, maybe? I think, well, we can tr try to start that out, I guess. All right, let's do that. At least it won't be retrograde. It'll be not quite as hard to get to as it is right now. Incidentally, I think I underestimated how much I'd be messing around with this asteroid, and so I think I'll have to save the jewel mission for the next episode. Uh, I didn't really think that I would be doing quite so many asteroid adventures this time around. Thought I'd just leave somebody over there and then hop back to the KSC to get a mission going, but... Since it's Jeb, I guess we couldn't just sort of let it go. We'll bring him back this episode at least. So that's my plan. Uh, so we'll delay the jewel mission, but we'll bring Jeb back with the science. Okay, where's my maneuver node? Should be an inclination change. Yeah, there it is. Oh, we could probably dump these. Yeah. Come on. Those other ones were d done anyway. Wonder why our the center of mass is deviated so much from where we're pointing. I don't remember telling it to do that. Well, I'm not gonna mess with it right now. Didn't realize it would deviate like that. Or maybe it's... hold on. Oh. Okay, maybe I will adjust right now. Uh, yeah, free pivot. Pre free pivot. Whoa. Sort of an odd angle we're at compared to the asteroid. Are you really targeting the asteroid? Oh no. It was tricking me and target something else. I had targeted something else. Wow. My ability to get words out today is very, very low. Okay, now lock pivot. Okay, that's that stage. 
We've got plenty more where that came from. Okay. I wonder if we could just put it into a regular orbit even. Instead of a polar one. That's not too bad. Honestly. Can we aim for such a thing? I don't want to wait six hours. I think we can do it here just fine. Let's just see how much of it we can do. I guess... Yeah, the idea of a polar one... Maybe it's better just to keep it polar. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it polar rather than try and flatten it out. Sort of makes it unique. So instead of uh, flattening it out, perhaps the thing to do would be to bring the orbit in tighter. Uh, in, in. And so we'll get a circular polar orbit. It'll make it harder to adjust the inclination later. But sure makes it interesting. Okay. So I think this might have the making of our first asteroid station. Not the easiest thing to get to because it's in polar orbit, but that'll make it unique. Okay, that's it for that stage. I think uh, we'll leave it here for now. I want to uh, retain the stage that we've got uh, to bring us back home the this stage up here uh, I think it's time for Jeb to return so let's oh yes let's rename the asteroid uh, this is a polar orbit yeah you know what uh, I don't know <sighs> scientist associated with the pole I'm not that well versed in such things I think uh, it's a good place to view the stars, so we're just going to call him Kepler. So that's Kepler. Okay. Yeah, let's release. Release. Back away. Disarm. Okay. So now we have to figure out how to get back home. There are two ways of doing that. We could retro burn from here or retro burn from the other side. I think we're gonna have to leave the stage that this stage as space junk. Um, will we have enough battery power? It's depleting already. It's because of the lights. I'm gonna turn the lights off. Oh, we had extra lights that we. Oh, okay. I don't want to turn the lights off. Oh, some of the lights weren't on. That's a shame. Uh, but oh, we've got a battery pack here, but we won't have enough for lights, I don't think. But let's just transfer battery power and then turn off the lights. Okay, what's the other? Oh, monopropellant. Yeah, let's transfer monopropellant. Actually, the monopropellant should be coming with us. Yeah. All the raw propellant comes with us. It is just a spent stage. So let's decouple. Okay. Spent stage is very hard to see, but electric charge is an uh, issue now. Alright. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait till Apoapsis 2. I should have just ditched it out. Apoapsis. What is. Is there. Oh no, it's just something in the background that made it seem like there was something already at Apoapsis. Okay. Um,
Okay, let's stop. Oh. Uh, oh. Careful. Uh, I want to stage those separately. Yeah. Oh, we do have one of those panels. Okay, let's turn on... Well, hardly necessary to turn on lights here. The problem is, you need the lights on the dark side, and that's when you're not getting any solar power. Oh well. Departing the Kepler asteroid, which... Hey! I renamed that! I, I thought I renamed that, didn't I? Why is it still... Oh, now that one I know I forgot to rename. I wonder if it'll still... Hmm. That's strange. I haven't uh, undocked a vehicle from this one yet, so I don't see, know whether it actually rename, uh, keeps the renaming when I leave. Hmm. Oh well. Well, when we put station parts on it, we'll definitely uh, be able to rename it then. Because yeah, it'll take the name of the parts rather than anything else. Okay, we should orient retrograde. Okay, very gentle, manageable re-entry, and we can get the lights back on now, just so we can see stuff. And as we orient properly, we've got a lot of mod propellant, but we've got four pa parachutes, should, should, so it should be fine. Wow, what a bad day for words today. Okay, parachutes. SAS off. I'm gonna dump the rest of the fuel though. Okay. Just us and the parachutes and a lot of RCS too, but... Okay. Parachutes open, 4.8 meters per second. Should be over ocean, considering when the parachutes opened. Indeed. Alright, let's recover vessel. Okay, 73 science earned, but a lot more experience getting asteroids into orbit, especially with the smaller asteroids, seeing what we can do with those. So yeah, very satisfactory. Let's take a quick look at the tech tree. So yeah, I mean, uh, there's not much we can do with 135, there's just really this one. So I guess we might as well get that one, fill out our tech tree. And so next time I'll be looking for interplanetary missions. I'm not going to be too concerned since I already, uh, since the asteroids we looked at seem to enter with the periapsis we expected. I'm just going to wait until the next one that we don't have a periapsis for, which is RDU-354. And that's coming in after we would launch the dual mission. So the priority next time is to launch the dual mission, not pay any attention to asteroids because the ones that I've got listed will just pass us by anyway. And uh, so I won't get distracted and we'll do a, we'll launch the dual mission, but we can't uh, send it there yet because there are other things we need to do in the interim, including sending our Duna mission. Remember, 10 days after we launch our dual mission, we have to also uh, send out a Duna mission so we can investigate the surface of Ike. So that will have to be launched also. So yeah, uh, lots of things to do concurrently, but let's get this particular technology so that we know what comes after it. And yes, uh, Jeb has had his first encounter with an asteroid, and I'm sure uh, he's receiving great congratulations for his efforts. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.